defense back again. Today, we're talking about something that I bet you, oh, I bet you're pretty good, has affected your life in at least one way or another, or maybe you're that person. And I ain't knocking you if y'all, because man, it happens. What we're talking about is mental illness and the family, as well as recognizing the warning signs and how to cope with it. Because I guarantee you, every one of us has dealt with mental illness in our family. And maybe we were that person and had to cope. For me personally, my mother became clinically depressed when I was maybe five, six years old and remains that way to this day. But I'll tell you this, there's been lots of ups and downs with her, but she's doing really good these days. So I'm very proud of mama for that one. Also, I, as you know, have been diagnosed and have ADHD. I don't really look as that much as an illness, more as something that makes my life awesome. But maybe you look at it as an illness. And I have, you know, we've all been depressed at times, but I don't think I've been as depressed as it would to put it in the DSM 4 or 5, whatever they're on now. And how about mental illness? Let's talk about the woman, my current wife. She got every disorder in the book. Well, she doesn't have it, but she wants to think she has it. She's like, her and her sister fight over diseases. It's like, who gets muscular dystrophy or something? And you can't have that one because I got it. And her sister has a brain something or another has to have brain surgery and then and then my wife gets jealous because she doesn't have a disease that bad and then anytime my wife's like are you out there cheating on me and i'm like no i've been working all day woman what are you talking about she's like persecutory delusional disorder man she got a daggone disorder as an excuse for everything i think it all goes down that dark triad but we talked about that in a previous video get this one y'all so oh lady she's one of them people that just like blow up your phone like if you don't answer i'm about to call you eighteen thousand times which is very funny because mom craig's very much like that man back in them locked up days that son of a bitch you in there you gonna call and call and call you answer call and call and call man there's a reason to answer this phone right now okay but anyway my old lady's like that craig's cool but Man, I don't know. I don't think he really is, but he may be. I don't know. But they could be calling Craig schizophrenic. My old lady freaked out on his ass because I didn't want to talk to her. I was like, Craig, you talk to her. And she's like, you're just a schizo motherfucker that needs to be on his meds. Man, she act like the meekest little thing in front of anybody. But then, ooh, you hit a trigger and she got triggers 360 degrees around her. Papow. Oh, BBC. And I ain't talking about what you think. I'm talking about bitches be crazy. And, you know, bitches can be dudes too. So for the women out there, don't think I'm just directing this at you. Here's what we're talking about. We're talking about that mental illness in the family, recognizing warning signs and how to cope. You know, most people believe that mental health conditions are rare and happen to someone else. Yeah, man. For real, a lot of people have like these blockades in their minds, right? In fact, do you know that mental health conditions are common and widespread? There's an estimated 44 million Americans who suffer from a mental health disorder in any given year. And I think there's, what, 300, 360 million of us? I ain't doing the percentage right there in my mind, but, I mean, that means you know someone. What is mental illness? Mental illnesses are brain-based conditions that affect thinking, emotions, and behaviors. Since we all have brains, having some kind of mental health problem during your life is actually really common. <laughs> yeah, man, like seriously, you live through life, there's a great chance that somewhere during that life, you will have had some sort of mental health problem. Otherwise, man, tell me how you did it. I don't make a daggum billion dollars teaching people that or something. Anyways, for people who have mental illnesses, their brains have changed in a way in which they are unable to think, feel, or act in ways that they want to. 
For some, this means they're experiencing extreme and unexpected changes in mood. Like feeling more sad and worried than normal. For others, it means not being able to think clearly. Not being able to communicate with someone who is talking to them or having bizarre thoughts to help explain the weird feelings they're having. There are more than 200 classified forms of mental illness. Some of the more common disorders are depression, bipolar disorder, dementia, schizophrenia, and anxiety disorders. That's what, like, man... Y'all know that she's like severe anxiety, severe anxiety all the time. Which, I mean, I, my heart goes out. Like, for real, I'll try to help you with that. Those she was running with before who was under similar charges than me. I, no, I don't know how that happened. But anyways, those she was running before, he talked to this chili pepper guy who was a chili pepper. And he had the poppers. I don't know if it was like Big Pete Chili Pepper and the poppers. And he would just have conversations with them. My ex old lady, after she went through a whole lot of, well, basically getting off of a whole lot of drugs and then having some, like, extreme emotional distress happen in her life, she sat there and talked to red birds. And I ain't talking about just talking to red birds. I'm talking about them red birds talk back. Let's talk about warning signs and symptoms. When we look at mental health, we're going to kind of kind of break it up into three groups of age. Talk about younger children. Like, what are some of the signs and symptoms that a younger child may be suffering some form of mental illness? Well, you're going to look at changes in their school performance, poor grades despite strong efforts, changes in sleeping or eating habits, excessive war, worry, worry or anxiety, uh, that meant refusing to go to bed or school as well. Hyperactivity, persistent nightmares, persistence, disobedience, and aggression, and frequent temper tantrums. Did y'all know that most of my life I had like I guess they call them nightmares, but I didn't look at them like nightmares. It's just like I was always running from something. The world was gonna end. It was just always something horrible going on, and I'm having to save it. Man, it had never been. Since I got all this stress out of my life and added on a ton of this other stress, like not being able to see my boy, then I've had good dreams. And I'm talking about for the first time in my life. Isn't that something? So after young children, we'll go talk about like our adolescents and stuff like that. Now in older children and pre-adolescents, one of the big things you want to look at is substance use. For instance... I know a lot of people and might have married one at one point who started substance use when they were pre-adolescents. And that's some shit. Now, they also had the inability to cope with problems and daily activities, changes in sleeping or eating habits, just like before, excessive complaints of physical ailments. Yeah, man, you ever... Uh, when something hurts, it hurts, and I understand that. But when you, you can realize there's a point where this person has done become to excessively complain about physical ailments. My God, did I have to go through that? Changes in the ability to manage responsibilities at home and school. Defiance of authority, truancy, and vandalism. Also intense fear. Prolonged negative mood. Y'all know how we talked about negativity and how that affects you. And when you're a older children or preteen adolescents abusing substance, have some of these other things going on with you, and then you have a prolonged negative mood, you're wiring your brain up to be negative for life. I'm not saying you can't fix it, but it's going to take some work. You're going to have to do the legwork to get that going. And frequent outburst of anger. Then we get to, you know, adults, young adults, and adolescents. Confused thinking, you know, like if you ever notice they're just confused or maybe you're noticing you're confused yourself, something like that. Prolonged depression that comes with sadness and irritability. Feelings of extreme highs and extreme lows. Excessive fears, worries, and anxieties. Social withdrawal. Dramatic changes in eating or sleeping habits. That one kind of goes pretty much with all these, right? Strong feelings of anger, strange thoughts delusions right like that that dude i was telling you about who max old lady was running with speedballing before i got her over here and got the needle out her she you know 
said that he had some kind of friends, something, something. I'll call him Sergeant Pepper and the Poppers, but I guess he's some kind of jalapeno, and he saw him and talked to him all the time. It was kind of crazy. Seeing or hearing things that aren't there, hallucinations, like, man, that happened to me one time. Like, used to, I come home from work, and I'd be like, we lived in this, this, this townhouse where there's a garage on bottom and two stories. And I'm walking up the stairs, and I hear the TV on. And I turn up, I turn around the corner, ain't no TV on. So, anyway, I asked my psychiatrist about it. He was like, no, man, you're not, it's not like you're thinking like right there. This is just, it's just ADHD. It's totally quiet in there. Your brain's going to make something up to fill the gap. So, it was cool with me, but I'm just saying that could be something else for one of you to look at or seeing another person, right? The growing inability to cope with daily problems and activities, suicidal thoughts, numerous unexplained physical ailments. Like my wife always thinks she got any and everything. Her and her sister fight over multiple sclerosis. Who gets it? Who don't? Don't make no daggum sense. All right, and then you got a lot of people fibromyalgia, and I, I'm not bitching at the people that actually got it. A lot of people could really have that. I'm just saying that's one of these things these people will use as one of their numerous unexplained physical ailments. And then you always got your substance use. And if y'all would like to know more about substance use, especially if you want to relate that to marijuana, go look back. On my channel and we can got a whole video on marijuana and addiction so how do you cope day to day well you accept your feelings despite different symptoms and types of mental illnesses many families who have loved ones with mental illness share similar experiences you may find yourself denying the warning signs worrying what other people will think because of the stigma or wondering what caused your loved one to become ill you just accept all that. Accept it for what it is. That's how you process. Don't push it out there and act like it ain't going on. Accept it. Because it's not until you can accept it that you, if you're a person who is loving, caring, and has enough mental willpower and fortitude to help others, well, once you accept it, you'll be able to do that for your loved one. We talk about handling unusual behavior. The outward signs of mental illness are often behavioral. A person may be extremely quiet or withdrawn, or conversely, they may burst into tears and have great anxiety or outburst of anger. Even after treatment started, some individuals with a mental illness can exhibit antisocial behaviors. When in public, these behaviors can be disruptive and difficult. To accept. Yeah, man. We were going over pregnancy dresses one time. Made me drive all the way, like an hour away, to this one place of pregnancy dresses. They didn't have what she wanted. Flipped out, yelled at people, and then made me get in the car and drive her back. And I'm like, well, there's like a lot of other stores in this town. We can just go to another store and look for pregnancy dresses. Nah, -uh, not with this one. Man, I wish I had done a better job at. Being able to help her navigate her mental illness. But I guess I just didn't have the tools or the know-how. But I had the love. And I tried. And I still love her. That's the mother of my child. Man, my son means more to me than anything in this world. Sorry to go off on a tangent. Another thing you want to do during these times. You or a loved one is having and suffering from mental illness. Is establish a support network. Whenever possible, seek support from friends and family members. And if you cannot discuss your situation with a friend or family member because they don't really are that type of person that knows how to love or whatever or just is too hard freaking headed, you can find yourself a support group. They're all over the place. Just grab one up. Give it one try. If you don't like it, don't go back. But give it a shot. They give you, you know, an opportunity to talk about these experiences with people who have experienced similar stuff. If you need to, you know, go find you some counseling. I think betterhelp.org or com uh, is one that, 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 that I went to for a little bit. A guy was pretty cool to me. My, my, my wife made me quit it because she told me it was stupid and bullshit that I'm talking to someone on a computer even though they're a certified therapist. But regardless, I mean, I thought he was cool. 
And if, don't ever feel down on yourself. You want to go to therapy. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Don't make you no wussy, sissy. Don't make you a weak-minded person. It takes a strong person to go to therapy. And you got to remember sometimes take time out. Give yourself a break. Sometimes you just need to realize that you are emotionally drained from this. And you just got to step back and recharge them emotional batteries. But, you know, I have lived with and have suffered, probably, and married and been in relationships with people who have actual severe mental illness. And it's hard to know what to do for them. Because you try to bring everything from a place of love, this person's not going to have that. And then, maybe it's not mental illness. Maybe it's personality disorder. Maybe it's personality disorder combined with mental illness. Like, you got some big kind of narcissociopath, and they also have mental illness. I don't know how those two correlate or go together. Like, if you're a narcissist, sociopath, Machiavellian, dark triad person, does that mean you're mentally ill? I would think it probably would in one way. But I don't know how that DSM V4 or whatever, 5, would, would categorize that. Anyways, man, maybe I've got something out of this. We're just looking for signs of mental illness. And I think the main point here is to, one, self-reflect, look at yourself and say, hey, may I have some sort of mental stuff going on with me? And if so, that's cool. It's no big deal. A lot of people have it. But how, what can I do to try to, you know, fix that or at least take steps towards fixing that? And also, if you're a person who is completely sane, which I have yet to meet said person, and you have a family member with mental illness, maybe this will help you in being able to say, hey, this person I very much love may be suffering from some mental illness, and here's some things that I can do to, to recognize that. And then you can go out, seek resources, and try to help this person you love. And I'll tell you what, I love each and every one of you. I know I tell you that every time, but I do. And I also always forget to ask you to like and subscribe. Man, please leave me a comment. I, I don't think this one went as good as I want it to, but daggum! Life's been so crazy right now, it's hard to work up the energy. We ain't even going right there. This ain't about me. This is about you. And I love each and every one of you. It's T-Fitz. I'm out.